Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. How are you? I cannot complain at all, besides the fact that um, I started my day off with my eyes dilated. So um, bear with me if I would. If, if I look a little hazy. No, you look good. You should have worn your sun shades for the episode. <laughs> oh, you know what? I should, I, I got I, I got my hold on here, here they are. Bam. <laughs> it's gonna be a cool episode. Now it is yes. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tug it out through the light and, and we're gonna get on with the show. But uh we got an awesome guest today and without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is a grunge country singer whose debut single, Excuse the Mess, amassed more than one million streams in its first week when it was released in September. He recently released a second original song, Get There First. He also served in the United States Air Force. Please give a warm cheap chat welcome to Austin Snell. Hey. Hey, how are we? Thanks for having me. Hey, how you doing, Austin? Can you hear me? I'm making it, man. We had a, a less stressful day today. We kind of had some meetings to get. Yes, I kind of got some lag going on. Oh, that's all good. It, we'll 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 kind of push through it if we can. Uh, so thank you so much again for joining us today, and uh, okay. it's a pleasure to meet you. And where are you joining us from? Uh, we're in Nashville, Tennessee, right now. We are uh, right downtown, in the middle of all of it at the moment. <laughs> Got you. I, well, I, I see. I see this killer Longhorn behind you. So, for some reason, I thought you were in the great state of Texas, uh, since our headquarters is da- here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, but you, you're in you're in good old Nashville. Sir, yeah, it's just a wall decoration. I don't know anything about. Oh, I think we got a little lag going on. No, we do. Um, if Austin is still there, <laughs> we'd like to start off by hearing about how your tour with Warren Siders has been going and what has the audience reaction been like? Yeah, so um, we started out, uh, this is the first weekend of the tour. So we uh, we went to Mobile, Alabama, um, did a night there at a soul kitchen and then we went to Ponte Vedra, Florida after that. And then we just got back from Fort Myers, um, yesterday. So it's, uh, it's been a long run of shows. Um, a lot of, a lot of long drives, but the crowd has been awesome. Um, Warren has some great fans and hopefully we're putting on a good show for them. We're trying to, so, uh, it's been a blast for me. It's my first experience being on the road fully. So, um, I'm just taking it all in trying to live in the moment as much as possible, but we're loving it. Awesome. Okay. Okay. And then your music is described as grunge country. Um, and um, in this first time I've heard that, I've heard that, um, could you explain that label to someone when who like is not familiar with grunge country? Yeah. So we, we kind of coined that pretty early on. Um, I grew up on rock music myself. My dad, um, listened to a lot of rock music growing up and, uh, I always tell this story about um, we used to do a lot of traveling when I was younger and uh, we had four CDs in the truck that we would kind of cycle through wherever we were going. And uh, we had three doors down. I don't know if you guys know who they are. Um, Creed, Nickelback, and then uh, Alan Jackson. So I kind of, when people ask me what my music sounds like, I kind of give them a mixture of those four four artists. So I think that pretty much sums me up as an artist is that kind of sound. And that's more of a grunge rock era. And so I kind of, I make country music and it's a little more rock, so I just called it grunge country. So kind of just ended up being what we call it because there's really nothing else to call it. Well, it, it sounds like country music that, that hadn't had shower yet. So uh, 
I just coined yeah. that just two seconds ago. So yeah, we <laughs> we, we might have to use that. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So uh, what people may not know is that you were an airman, right? And so you, you let's go back to your time uh, in the Air Force, which is a, also a part of your musical journey. So what what led you to enlist uh, straight out of high school? And uh, can you let us know where you were assigned? Uh, so yeah, I was, I've always pretty much thought I was going to join the military, um, from a young age. Um, and then later on in life, it was because I pretty much had horrible grades in high school. So I wasn't going to do anything else, but, um, I, uh, yeah, I always want to join the military and I actually tried to join the army at one point and, uh, because of a surgery I had, I couldn't do the job that I wanted to do in the army. So I was like, you know what, I'll just joined the Air Force and I'm sure, you know, they got some cool jobs. I ended up being an aircraft mechanic. I worked on the C-17s um, and that's what I did for four years. And uh, I was stationed out at uh, Travis Air Force Base in California. So that's where I did my, my enlistment and uh, pretty much found music um, on that journey. Uh, I never played guitar, really played anything um, until I was in the Air Force. I was at tech school in uh, Charleston South Carolina was when I bought my first guitar and I was just going to pretty much learn how to play covers because I'd always been interested in music and kind of was just trying to kill time because we were in training and um, waking up pretty early and then we didn't really have anything to do after that. So uh, I was just trying to kill time really and uh, ended up learning some covers and got bored with covers and um, just started trying to write my own music and it kind of one thing led to another and we just kind of ended up here. So, but uh I mean, I'm thankful for the Air Force and everything it taught me about, you know, uh, my morals and my work ethic. I, I pride myself in that a lot, um, and I attribute that to my time in the military. So, um, yeah, and it all kind of led me here in a way. So so do you have, like, a most kind of memorable um, moment in BMT, uh, something you can probably sh you, you can share maybe if, if it's family friendly? Because I know how, how stuff gets down in the BMT sometimes. Yeah, uh, let's see. Hmm. So I was an element leader uh, through BMT, um, which doesn't really mean a whole lot on the in the actual Air Force that you were element leader in BMT. But I was an element leader for the majority of BMT, and uh, I actually got fired from my slot um, the week of graduation for slap boxing in the bathroom on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I told my parents through all my notes that, yeah, I'm going to graduate front of the line. Like, I'll be at the front of the flight, you know, when we graduate. and It's going to be super cool. You can take pictures and I'll look important. And then but I think it was literally two days before we graduated. I got caught slap boxing in the bathroom. and I got fired. So, yeah. <laughs> so was that your first time slap boxing or had you gotten away with it for a couple of times before they got you got caught? Uh, I believe so. It was my birthday. It was on my birthday. And so I guess, I don't know, we were just. I don't really even know, but I had slap box a few times before <laughs> in high school, so I knew what I was doing. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing, man. Of course. And, and and to and to the future recruits, don't be slap boxing two days before your graduation. <laughs> uh, coming to the Air Force, it, it, it doesn't work out well for you, at least in that moment. <laughs> yeah, slap box after. Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> Now, so you mentioned that you started with covers and then you started writing music. So what kind of inspired you to write your own songs? Yeah, um, so I've always had a, a deep appreciation for music and I've always, I feel like, looked a little deeper into music than my peers did growing up. Um, something as small as like a guitar part that was in a song that nobody else really paid any attention to, but I was super drawn towards and then lyrics in general. Um, so I feel like I've always had a, a little bit of a deeper appreciation for music than my peers did. But, um, when it came time to, I mean, I've, I've always, you know, been a, I'd like to think I'm a creative person. Um, but, uh, when it came time for me to start playing covers and stuff, I also get bored pretty easy. So I always feel like I have to keep progressing my craft and what I do. Um, so when, when I was learning covers, I just easily got bored doing that. So I, I needed some time to. To, to be creative and, and that was the best way to do that. And also it's really therapeutic for me to, cause I'm not a super um, extroverted person. So I, I, I like to um, share my emotions through my songs. And that's kind of how I found is the best way for me to do that. 
So how did being away from home while you are in the Air Force influence, influence your name? Um, I mean, so my family's always been super close. We've always done everything together. Um, and so when I was away a lot, especially during COVID times, because that was my last year in the Air Force was when COVID was happening. So at that point, I hadn't um, seen my family in probably a year, maybe. Um, but as far as my songwriting goes, I think just being away from my hometown and where I grew up in general is what influenced my songwriting the most. Um, just because, I mean, that's what country music is, is talking about, you know, country stuff. And so not being in the country, being in San Francisco, California, it's 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 kind of it's kind of hard to write country music out there. So it's kind of I was trying to draw inspiration from, you know, the roots in Dublin, Georgia to, to, to my songwriting. So I guess that's probably how it played the most. Gotcha. And so, you know, we always kind of talk about uh, kind of trusting the process or kind of enjoying the journey. And so you made it all the way to Nashville from a, from an Air Force career. Uh, and there were some bumps along the way. So can you kind of tell us about your musical journey to get to a music city? Yeah, so um, I, I've always posted my stuff on uh, social media um, ever since I first started playing covers. My mom talked me into uh, posting my, my covers that I was learning on Facebook for our friends to watch, and it took a little convincing, but I finally did. And, and then when I started songwriting, I started uh, posting those songs that I was writing in the same place on Facebook and Instagram and now TikTok. Um, so I would kind of made some connections through social media while I was in the Air Force. Um, and I'd kind of known that I wanted to do something in music. Uh, I didn't know that um, I was going to move to Nashville and, and, and try to do it fully. Um, but I knew it was something that I was interested in. And uh, I made a couple of really good connections on like through social media that kind of uh, helped me make a decision to move here. And um, when I got out, I got out of the Air Force in 2020, in October of 2020. And uh, my plan was really just to move home back to Georgia um, hang out with family that I haven't seen in a while or hadn't seen in a while and uh, get a job and save up so I could afford to move here. And um, I had finally got out and got a job and was working to save up to move here, and, uh, which I'm not a great saver in general. So it was it was taking a little longer already than, than planned. But uh, yeah, so I'd been saving up and I, I'd finally kind of saved up enough and kind of um, – been in Georgia long enough to where I felt like I was ready to go off again. And uh, so I signed a, a lease for an apartment in uh, Nashville. Um, and I believe it was, would have been January. Yeah. Of last year. And uh, a week to the day that I signed my lease to move here. Um, I, so I used to be pretty um, active in the gym and uh, thought I had slipped a disc in my back from deadlifts. So I went and got an MRI done, and they found a tumor in my spine, um, not a slip disc. So, uh, and that was a week after I signed my lease. So I'd already been locked into this lease and was supposed to move pretty soon, and uh, had to cancel those plans obviously and have surgery on that in February. And luckily, I had my roommates at the time that I had never met before um, that I thought were just going to kick me off the lease because I had no clue who they were. Um, I wouldn't expect them to do anything. Um, called me and told me, hey, we'll cover whatever we can of, of your rent while you're recovering from your back surgery. And uh, whenever you can move up here, just move up here and we'll cover your end as much as we can while you're not here. So um, that's kind of one of those God things, I think. Um, like there's no, they had no reason to, to help me out like that. They had no clue who I was. I literally met one of them on a roommate app uh, prior. So... Um, yeah, so I had that surgery in February and, um, obviously couldn't work during that time. So I was spending my savings account to, to live pretty much. Um, so I kind of had to restart the whole process and ended up moving here in May of, uh, last year. So that's kind of my long and hard process of getting up here, but yeah, we got no, here. That's so. awesome. No, that's an awesome story, man. And it, and it, 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 it's a, so many things that kind of come to mind, but one one definitely meaning that there are some really good people out there in the world. I think uh, the the negative get, gets highlighted so much um, on, on you know just on a normal basis, but you know for pretty much complete strangers to to 
kind of see the situation you're in and willing to help you out is just, you know, it just, it just, it just puts that back in the atmosphere that there are some, some, some awesome people out there in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, for sure. But now's your time to shine as we can see. So excuse the mess was officially your debut, but you also had some other songs on social media that um, <clears throat> you were posting and kind of getting out there to the people so we could hear your amazing sound, which I love, love, love. So when can we expect a full album to drop? <laughs> uh, we're working on it. I'll say that much. Um, we are working towards that. Um, right now we're just putting um, songs out whenever we can. And uh, we're kind of shooting for, for every, you know, so often every month or so to put out a song and eventually we'll work our way to a, to an album. So that's the goal for us. You know, we're always we're always trying to get some exclusive stuff here, uh, Austin. So you got to forgive me. We, we're, try, we're trying to we're trying to br break some, break some news that nobody knows about around here. <laughs> I know. Hey, if you'd have caught me on my first interview, I probably would have told you. But I, I've been through a couple now. So I, 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 are, he, are, are you media trained now, man? We got to catch you before you get media trained. <laughs> yeah, no, we're working on it though. There, there will be a full album for sure. Awesome. Nice. And so along with your originals, you released a, a strong cut of the capacity wasting all these te tears. Which, um, I think I played that on loop when I got dumped. That is like the ultimate, like this person I've ever dated, dated song, like that song. And so, so what inspired that choice and what was the reaction to it? Yeah, I think the choice was just, I mean, the same reason. I played the original version of it when I got dumped when it came out in 2013. So um, I, I try to, I try to uh, when I do my covers on TikTok, I used to just post them, me sitting in a truck and playing whatever I was learning that day. And uh, I always tried to do something different than what everybody else was covering on TikTok. And at the time, everybody was covering something in the orange by Zach Bryan. And so I was not going to jump on that train. I was going to do something different. And uh, covered that song, and it did really well on TikTok. And it's a song that I remembered jamming to in the car by myself when it came out. And uh, which I wasn't old enough to drive when that came out, but when my mom was in the grocery store, I'd jam it sitting in the car. Um, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, so when it came time to to look for a cover to put out, I mean that one had had done really well for us on TikTok, and it's a song that I love. And I thought that we could put a different spin on it because obviously. Cassidy's a female, and and I think that there 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 was a cool lane for us to add a different perspective to it. So I think that's kind of what we were shooting for, and it seems to be doing all right for us. So that's good stuff, man. So your songs kind of have big guitar, bass, and drum sounds. So can you kind of tell us about the musicians and producers that you're working with? Yeah, uh, we're so I mean we're kind of in a in a weird time with music at least in country music and i feel like a rock wave is is amongst us right now and i feel like there's a super wide open lane for it and uh i, I don't know really why um but i know that the people that kind of grew up on that stuff like myself are now um at the age of making music and going to concerts and i grew up on on the rock music and so um when it comes time for me to write a song for myself that i would put out um i feel like the rock thing is is the most authentic and and what i want to make as an artist and like i said i think there's all the people that grew up on that music are now my age which are the listeners age and i feel like that's kind of what's helping us out right now and it's just i try to just be as authentic as i can and i think that's what that is is the rock music so well li listen if, if you live long enough what i've learned because I'm, I'm i'm slightly older than you austin not not too much but just, just slightly, but if you live long enough, man, you everything's gonna make this this full circle loop, whether it's bell bottoms or music or <laughs> fashion. It just everything just makes a loop in life, and um, you know, you just yeah, you're part of that loop, man. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't, I don't see myself ever, ever wearing bell bottoms again, but he's there all. Don't hey, don't knock it till you try. I've been seeing a lot of this Balenciaga stuff, and it looks like bell bottoms to me. I've been, I've been watching Kanye <laughs> hey, on his rant with these big pants on. So I, those are those are yeah, bell hey, bottoms man, all day long. Yeah, they they can have them. 
No, so something I thought about when I heard your recent track was how Shania Twain kind of came in and merged rock and country, but you have like set a new sound or a new precedent for a new sound. So how do you feel about the future of grunge country? Like, do you ever think about I'm kind of pioneering, you know, this new wave of music or kind of taking country in a new direction? And like, there's people under me that'll come up and make this an even popular thing. Like, what do you think about when you're creating this music? Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, it's just how I feel um, is my realest self is that. Um, and I mean, you look back to when when uh, <clears throat> Waylon Jennings and all those guys were coming up and Hank Williams Jr., that was a new sound back then. And uh, I feel like country is ever evolving. And so I feel like there's a new way for that, I think. I think... Uh, I don't, I don't know if I'm pioneering. I'm just kind of being true to myself. And if it happens to be that we change the way country music is, then so be it. But um, I just try to write what I would enjoy listening to if I were to turn on my Spotify and, and listen to a song. So that's kind of my mindset. I'm not really actively thinking of pioneering country music, but we're just kind of <laughs> no, taking it day by day. I think we're, I think we're on Emily. Emily, where are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was my turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll go, I'll go for it. I got you, Emily. No, I, okay. <laughs> I was asking me a question. Sorry. My audio is all messed up. Okay. Got you. Well, Austin, so you said that you don't you don't mind I guess pioneering, uh, or whatever the case may be. So you know, as when I when my kids kind of are listening to music, I'm I'm in the older generation, so I'm like I don't understand what what the, what, what what you like about this. But then I think back about when I was growing up, my parents was like, "What the heck, heck are you listening to uh, this? You know, rap music or whatever the case may be." And so you know. Having having the the older generation accept kind of the younger generation's take on you know because you you got your country music purists out there that are you know that's just it is what it is they like what they like and so like how do you, are you just targeting younger folks or, or do you do you want to bring in some of those uh, kind of country music purists uh, in your fan base? Yeah, I don't think I'm I'm targeting anybody really. Um... I think, like I said, I, I, I just try to make music that I would enjoy personally listening to. And I was in the same boat when I was growing up. I was listening to rap music and my mama hated that I listened to Lil Wayne when I was growing up, yeah. but it was, it was the cool thing to listen to and I loved it. And so, um, I've kind of always just had a different taste for music and, and just listened to what I enjoyed listening to and not really what people say that we should be listening to. I, I kind of just, I mean, I also, we also grew up in a, in a, different time to where I had access to whatever music I wanted to listen to when I was in middle school yeah, and high school. Absolutely. Like we had iPods and I was going from Lil Wayne to freaking ACDC to, to Three Doors Down and then Alan Jackson, you know, I was listening to literally everything under the moon. And so that's why I feel like we're in such a cool time in music is all the people that grew up that way with all these different tastes of music are now making music and it can literally yeah. be whatever you want it to be. And I, I pride myself in trying to remain genreless. Um, and just making what I love, so it's kind of gotcha, where I'm gotcha. at. So, so, so what you're saying? We're gonna have a Lil Wayne feature. Uh, uh, it's sometime <laughs> in the in the near future. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be against it. Lil Wayne can hop on a track whenever he wants. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So you're also all over social media. So how important is social media to a young artist like yourself? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's everything now. Um, you know, before when, when people were coming up in music, especially in Nashville, you go and play um, the Bluebird Cafe and hope that somebody is there sitting there eating a hamburger that sees you that works in the music industry and, and likes what you're doing and then comes up afterwards and says, hey, you want to sign a record deal? Now it's, you know, are you on TikTok and are your TikTok numbers good enough? And or do you have a fan base that really wants to hear what you have going on? And so really social media is running music right now. Um, 
and which is cool. You know, it's like you said, there's an ever evolving circle, you know, um, I think it won't always be like that, but I think that I've realized what it is and I try to hone in on what the most important things are. And I think right now, especially for young artists, a social media presence is pretty much everything. Absolutely. So can you, can you let our viewers know kind of, uh, where they can find you on social media? Yeah, so I'm Austin Snell Music on everything, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and TikTok. So, okay, so Austin Snell Music on everything. That's that's what's up. And so, um, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and so for our Chief Chat viewers, you can find this episode as well as past episodes on YouTube. So make sure you tune in uh, at 11 a.m. February 20th, 21st. Uh, when our guest will be author Reed Mittenbuehler, who will be talking about his upcoming novel, Wanderlust, an eccentric explorer, an epic journey, a lost age. So, Austin, man, we really appreciate your time. We appreciate you being on the show uh, and kind of taking us through your journey of life. Uh, and, and, and I always try to, you know, pull some type of mentoring moment out of any conversation that I have. And, and I can just tell that, you know, you, you came in the military, uh, you know, kind of under the same circumstances I was because I was uh, I, I wasn't making the best of grades and I knew I wasn't going to go to college. So I a recruiter was 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 finessed me enough to, to, to join the Marine Corps at the time. But, you know, and so uh, but, you know, it was it ended up being probably one of the best decisions I made in my life because it, it, it changed my life. It got me out of some circumstances I was at back home. And and it's cool to hear your story, how you kind of joined the military and then even though you didn't make it a career, you didn't stay 20 years, but you made the best out of that four years to to start your passion and, and make some connections along the way. Because uh, you said you, you made some connections in the Air Force that kind of helped get your career started. So that's just awesome to hear that from anybody that that has, you know, maybe doubts or maybe want to join the military. Like there's so much opportunity there. And I'm just glad you were on the show to kind of share that. There is, and I appreciate y'all for having me. It was an honor to be here. And yeah, I met some of the best people I'll ever know in life while I was in the military. So if nothing else, I'll take that away from it. Absolutely, man. And and I, we just want to let you know here at the exchange, man, we, we're we're, uh, we're rooting for you, man, and, and best of luck in your career. Got all the support and love from, here, from us here at the exchange. And just thank you for your time. Uh, if you don't mind hanging on to after the live so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes, but I just want to kind of salute you while you're on the show and and just uh, appreciate what you're doing and thank you for sharing your your talents and your your artistry with the with the world of course thanks for having me awesome awesome well that being said okay you guys take care uh chief chat out